Mill Serp Garage here with the Beretta 418. This is going to be the beginning of a foray into Beretta pistols here. And also, this is the first video that is going to be done under sponsorship. We got a sponsor, ladies and gentlemen. So you guys can uh, take advantage of a deal here and pick up something really cool. Give me a minute. Let me first, let's first introduce this gun properly. The Beretta M418 25 ACP. We're going to work our way through the calibers from 25 to 32 to 380 to 9 millimeter. We're going to start with this semi auto single action striker fired blowback operated. Manufacturing date 1949. Okay. They made these things, they started production somewhere around 1919, 1920. 1921, I read a lot of conflicting reports. There's actually no exact date when this thing started manufacture, but it's around there somewhere. Grip safety. So we pull the trigger, bang. Let's pull the trigger and go bang. What happens after that? Blowback operation. We're cocking. Not cocking, we're resetting this, the um, striker. Ejecting the round, picking up a new round, slide is closing, going into battery, seemingly going into battery. See how loose this is here? We're going to talk about that. This is, it's good that I got this. I always wanted to go through this with you guys. This thing came with dead springs. The springs are all dead. Um, dead. I want them dead. There's a uh, cocking indicator you see right here. Not a loaded chamber indicator. This one's a cocking indicator. The uh, gun is, of course, empty. So we can... Drop the striker right there. And uh, you heard even that was a little weak. But this is definitely blowback operated by checking it like that. What else do you see that looks really weird here? This patina looks kind of odd, right? Um, that it looks like it's weird that the bluing is worn off all on the bottom. The receiver itself is aluminum. The slide is steel, barrel steel, like that. But this main frame housing right here is aluminum, which makes this thing feel weirdly light and sound kind of weird when you put it down on glass or on a certain kind of table it sounds weird because it's aluminum uh let's see as far as markings it's got some weird markings back here these um psfs over here on the body and on the slide right here with a crown see it right there a psf with a crown and over here there's a F with a circle around it. Not exactly sure what these things mean, but uh, and these things are cute. Look, we just did the Colt vest pocket, right? Look, there it is. I would say that's direct competition, huh? You know, it's uh, maybe has a slightly larger grip. You know, so what? Did, what do we got going on here? Well, let's see. First of all, we got our snap caps. This is going to be our sponsor. Realistic snap caps is going to be our sponsor. Just introducing it now, but I'm going to be doing a video just specifically on, on these. Uh, Realisticsnapcaps.com. You know I love these things. Look at these things. Did you see? You ever see snap caps that look like these things? Look at them. They're gorgeous. And uh, I love them so much. I asked them if it was okay if I uh, did a review for them, if I spoke about them on the channel, and uh, they were very receptive. They were really cool, and they want to offer a 10% um, a ten percent off uh, for um, my uh, my guys, for people getting uh, going to them from this channel. And um, that code, when you check out, is Mill Serp Garage just one word M I L S U R P G A R A G E? And uh, I'm pretty sure it was just one word. <laughs> and uh, give that a try, a checkout, and you'll get 10% off. These guys don't even charge shipping, and these things are a lot, not a lot of money. And I'm telling you, I'm going to do a video on, on exactly why. I just want to introduce them now and just show you what it is I'm actually using. And how cool these things look but i'm going to do a video uh, on them specifically just to talk about why those freaking things are awesome now here's what you actually use these things for which is 
another reason to uh, have good quality snap caps like this and not plastic ones or ones that you can't trust or ones that'll fall apart. They have to be durable. You use these things for like testing purposes, not just for tra realistic training, but actually for testing function. Now here, I mean, this spring is good. There's a spring here for the magazine. That one's good. There's a spring in the magazine. That seems decent. But here's where our problem is. This is way sloppy here. This, this spring, look at it. Bad news. So we're, we're not, look at that. It's not even chambering the round. You can't even pick up the round and close it on its own. I'm not even going to continue. It's just uh, bad news. Um, we definitely need to replace the, uh, the springs. So I can't even, I can't even show you how horribly it's functioning. It's just not even functioning. So we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to look to see what kind of screws we got. We got uh, screws, what kind of springs we got. Here's what, uh, here's what we bought. Wolf gun springs, this whole kit. So it's the service pack two that comes with everything you could possibly get for this gun. 1579 <laughs> with like eight and change for shipping in a priority box. So I mean, for like twenty, less than twenty-five bucks. And uh, what is this? We have warnings. We have paperwork. And we have a bag of springs. It's got every spring for the whole gun. Uh, with the service pack two, you can get just specific springs, but it just makes sense just to get the whole thing. So uh, we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna take a look and see what springs we got here. So disassembly, first thing we want to do is drop the striker because with these types of guns, if you take it apart with tension on the striker, it's just going to be sitting right up there on the sear on a spring and it's going to be just downright scary. Um, and the uh, magazine's already removed. What do we do now? Why am I drawing a blank? Okay, we open the action. And uh, these barrels just tip right up and out. How cool is that? And then we come down and... Oh, see, but then I cocked it again. So what I got to do is, once again, drop it with the uh, slide lined up. And then we'll just take the uh, whole slide right off. So here's, this feels so super light right here because it's uh, aluminum here. But uh, you got to remember that these rails here are aluminum this area where the barrel fits in is aluminum and these screws that hold the grip panels on screw into aluminum you got to remember all that aluminum is soft um, especially back when this pistol was made you know what I mean um, so here's the striker and the striker spring very similar to the uh, the cold vest pocket that we just did excepting that this is that loaded chain uh the cocking indicator that fits through this part like this to stick out the back of the um to stick out the back of the uh slide and uh this is that spring that's just so super dead look at it you can even see it even looks messed up so now that we got the parts let's get everything out of the way that isn't spring related and let's try to figure out Let's, uh, let's try to figure out exactly which springs we're just going to do for now the the uh, striker spring and the recoil spring. Let's just do those. And we'll worry about the magazine later. I think the magazine spring is okay for now. But uh, let's see. So this is the magazine spring. This one we don't need right now. This one could be that. I'm not sure. This is definitely for here. I'm not sure about that one. And this little teeny one right here. This is definitely for... Mm, I had that figured out before. <laughs> now I can't remember one of these if you delve in here there's one of these uh, parts has a teeny spring I can't remember now which one it was 
to be that no it must be that there you go that must be there so that's it so let's get everything else out of the way let's get these springs if you don't mind I'm just gonna put them back in the bag because if I accidentally brush into these or drop something they're gone forever you definitely have to be careful with springs they have a way of disappearing Alrighty, so that's what we got. So let's just, this is gonna be nice and easy. Let's just replace this with this. Wow, that feels better already. And let's just replace this directly with this. Oh, that's going on there, nice. Yeah, that fits nice in there. That feels good. Alrighty, let's reassemble. So, this goes in here. See on this spring pressure right here is what operates this, like a clicking back and forth. And you saw like you could tell this was just flopping around before because this that spring was so dead. Um, now what? Now we take the slide and we reinsert the striker here. And boom, now this is sticking out the top. It wasn't even sticking out there before. And then what do we do now? We get this on the rails there. Get this spring inside there. This goes up and we go all the way back and lock open. There we go. All the way back and lock open so we can drop in our barrel. Boom, that's in place. Then drop the slide. Safety off. And magazine. So now, oh, that feels much better. Now we're talking. That's what it's supposed to feel like. And wait, let's listen. Oh yeah, definitely a uh, fix it right there. There's no way it would have worked. I never even tried shooting it or doing anything with it in its condition. Uh, like I said, this magazine spring is nice to have. They're called plus five magazine springs, which means they go like five percent over the amount of spring force I'd like to help out. But this one that's in there seems like it's fine. Now we have no problem with that. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, we had a little failure to uh, extract right there. Oh, that's what one, that little one might be the extractor spring. We might have to do that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that now with you on camera, though. Because that's a little involved. See, now we're, we're jammed up good here. Oh, here we go. I want to show you what it, what it is that uh, I was noticing also is that this, this extractor here, let's lock this open again. The extractor... Let's, uh, you know what, let's, let's take it apart again. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This extractor here, it runs along the top of the slide. You see it here? How it. This is the springy motion. I think it's it's getting it's pushing down here. There's a spring in there. There must be. And there's a pin here that goes across the top that holds that in. And this just feels kind of soft, like it's not grabbing hard enough to extract. I did feel that. So then the the situation that I would have is what I just had right now, which is that the the recoil spring feels nice and uh, taut, but the it definitely felt like Charlie. What are you barking at? It definitely felt like that extract. See, that feels nice and stiff, but I didn't really feel like I was getting bite with the extractor to extract on it. You got to pull back nice with this. That's what I realized now that I wasn't doing is that you really gotta get the slide behind that round. 
And then here, you can see I have it captured. The extractor is grabbing it, but the extractor really needs to be strong enough to pull it out and back and over the rim of the other round. And it did okay then. I bet you it would, uh, it would function okay, but I think that that tiny spring, that's what that tiny spring was for. Let's just try it again with a fully loaded mag. Four, five, I guess it takes eight, six, seven, eight. All right, so there's wolf gun springs here. See, without these snap caps, you couldn't do any of this testing. You don't want to be messing around like this with live rounds. Because if if the striker somehow got hung up or something like that, you, you're just doing like feeding drills. But trust me, firing pins have a way of protruding in places they're not supposed to when you're doing testing. And you're going to be putting rounds through your wall. But trust me, um, that's that would be some scary uh, set of circumstances right there. You don't ever want that to be happening. And you can't leave these springs dead because... What happens then sometimes, I'll just give you one scenario. Let's just say, you know, a lot of these firing pins, they're inertia firing pins. So that means that if there's a round in there and you drop it or bang the gun, the spring is a certain amount of tension where the, the inertia, you need, the, fire, the firing pin would actually need to get hit by the hammer in order to have enough inertia to go fire forward and hit the round. Then if you drop it, no matter what, it wouldn't be enough inertia for the firing pin to strike the round and set it off. But if that spring that holds that firing pin, pin back was compromised, maybe then the firing pin would have enough inertia on a simple drop to go off. So there's one scenario to explain why these dead springs could be dangerous, but there's, there's lots of reasons. And operating the, operating the gun with these springs dead, I mean, that, they're like the brains of the gun. They're like what makes it function, you know what I mean? And if, it, and if they're weak or, uh, you know, if one's weak and you stretch it out thinking that you're going to make it stiffer or something like that, you can see when they go bad, they go bad. They start winding, start getting wide, and they start getting all weird looking. And then that's the end of them. There's no more, there's no more tension to the metal anymore. So stretching it out ain't going to help. You know what I mean? It's just going to make it not function properly. It's going to change the rate of the spring, and you're going to mess everything all up. You just need new springs, you know. So let's see if, if I, now I'm pulling back harder to so i'm saying like the exploding round would be like really coming back hard like that so yeah just it's the same one too this is the third one in i just don't think i'm uh pulling hard pulling hard enough i think the exploding round would cycle it see i got it right there But I'm gonna check it out though. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pop that that pin out there and I'm gonna see what's behind there. And I just I got a feeling it's that little that little tiny spring that was in here. This little tiny guy right here. See him? I think that I think that little tiny guy there goes goes up and down right back behind here to, to hold that like this, to hold that forward and down to grip the rounds better. So I think I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna do that. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um, so, wow, we, we did this whole gun already just by doing that, by replacing the springs. Jeez, I don't really have much history for this little guy. I really don't. I just know that uh, the Italians love these little pocket pistols, I'll tell you that. And we're going to follow the lineage of, of, this, uh, of this style of uh, gun here. The Italians had... Had uh, this uh, this exposed barrel here, where when you when you took them down, you uh, the 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 barrel uh, came out like that. This is very common in the in these Berettas, how the barrel pops out like that to take it down. That's pretty cool, and to clean it is nice, you know. Serial number on the barrel matches, and uh, yeah, that's the story. Oh, it feels nice to have that snap closed like that. Now it certainly, certainly was not doing that. So these springs, set of springs like that, I'm telling you, they're just between twenty and twenty-five bucks for the entire kit that comes with like literally every spring. I can't even imagine. I wonder if these are different rate springs for. No, because you know what? There's a spring. There's a spring here. For this, right? Somewhere in there. 
Oh, I see it. And then there's a spring for this. So that's two. Two more right there. Then, uh, yeah, that teeny one that I'm thinking is for that. And where does that last one go? Maybe the trigger. There must be a spring in the trigger. So uh, there you go. One of those maybe would like this one right here would be this trigger spring. So if I want to take a look now, if I could delve in there and take it apart and really replace all of these, I will. I mean, I have them. So that's the story. Now, stay tuned for a video coming up. We're going to do a uh, total expose on these snap caps. This is what makes diagnosing like this possible by using some the stuff that's real deal and, and not cheesy ones. I know you said you've like, oh, I've seen metal ones before or whatever, but but not like these. I'm going to show you the other metal ones that I have and what typically is out there and what sets these guys apart from everybody else. And again, um, to have full disclosure, they are a sponsor. However, I am not receiving any monetary compensation from them at all. I am um, just... Uh, ex uh, I want to talk about their product because I use it and because it's awesome. And uh, if they send me snap caps to test and show you guys, would be the only compensation that I have. But as of now, just to let you know, as of now, I have bags and bags like this of all different calibers of these snap caps. See? So, and I paid for all of them. So, I'm a customer. I'm not just, uh, you know, um, doing this for free stuff. I um, I love these things, and I reached out to them saying I wanted to actually do uh, videos on them. And that's what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon. We're going to be back with another Beretta in this series of Berettas. If you want one that's bigger than 25 caliber, um, you're in luck. Because they have one of these in uh, just about every freaking caliber. And we're going to take a look at them. And that's a fact, Jack. See you all later. All right, just a quick uh, little add-on here. I went to drive this pin out of the top here um, with this punch. And uh, it just fell out. Like, just fell right into this hole as soon as I touched it. So there really wasn't much drama there with driving that pin out. If anything, it's too loose. And then when I lifted here, I found a couple of things. I found uh, that I have no light. I found, number one, uh, that uh, there's a serial number on the extractor. 5894, is it? And, or 56... Five six one four and five six one four is matching on the uh, slide there, so that's kind of cool. It's a matching uh, extractor. And where's my tweezer? <laughs> I gotta get another one because my tweezer just vanished. It's right here to do this video. Put something down on top of it, I guess. Here we go. There it is. Now that. Is going to be replaced by. See, this is why it needs to be replaced. Look how crushed that is, and this is part of part of what was making it uh, not function properly. It wasn't just that that other spring you saw. It's this too. See the difference here in the size. Look at that. So this being all old and crushed, I'm going to clean out this channel here. I'm going to clean out this channel, which is all filled with crud. And clean off this extractor, who's all full of crud. And put in that spring. And then uh, we'll try this all over again. All right, so what happened here? Let's... We got a messy table. I should have cleaned the table first. Didn't. So here's what we uh, here's what happened. Okay, the pin just fell out when I was going to drive it, and this was just totally mushy here. There was no there was no downwards pressure here at all. It wasn't fulcruming on this pin at all with this uh, spring here, 
And uh, the new spring, I was like, oh no, wait a minute, this spring is way too large. It's not going to fit in here. But then what I realized is I took the base of this, which is rubbery, and I realized that I had to push down and compress that spring like this way, all the way in, and then drive that pin in. And then, man, now I can't lift that up with my finger anymore like I was before. And that's how those extractors are supposed to feel. So now, let's, uh, blah, blah, blah. where are we? Let's get uh, this thing back together again now. I'm sorry, this here, this on here, in here. Striker assembly, striker assembly in place. All right, slide stop in place, Did that go in the hole there, yes, and lock that open, barrel in, hmm, nice, now, let's get out our uh, snap caps again, you see how these things are, these things are just like a, uh, a constant they're just constantly used with diagnosing. You don't ever want to use live rounds, people. Trust me when I tell you. I'm going to tell you why in the next video. We're going to be talking about these snap caps. I just want to go fully loaded here. What a great sponsor to be like something that you use all the time and you love. I mean, that's what it's all about. You definitely want to be, you don't want to just be like, drink Coke. All right, now, boom, and that extractor feels, what's going on? This is the falling down over here. This extractor feels, oh, again, it slipped up, look at that. Again, it did that. What is causing that? I think it's that I'm not, I'm just pu pulling back. And the round is getting stuck on the rim of the one before it. And because I'm just pulling lazy, the extract is pulling off. I think if every time I just went like that, like how it would, that's how it ejects when it fires. That's what it is. It's just that these, these 25s, you see what's going on here. I'll show you. There's something interesting here that uh, I neglected to even talk about that I could show you. There is no, there's an extractor, but there's no ejector. The ejector, let me open it all the way. Mm, the ejector, you see it there? It's the firing pin. It's the striker is the ejector. So that's why if you're not pulling hard enough, and it makes you wonder what would happen if you were cycling live rounds if the firing pin Firing pin is meant to eject spent cartridges. What if you go slamming live cartridges into that thing? Makes you wonder, huh? Well, there you go. Here's a perfect example of why to stick with snap caps when you're fooling around with uh, function drills. But um, I'm going to take this thing to the range, and you're going to see this thing is going to function flawlessly. Um, just lazily pulling the action. It's a awkward action to get a feel to to pull to get it's just like an awkward thing it's tight now so i think it just needs that impulse hit like boom that that shot back will eject the brass every time um i'm confident so uh but it does feel better with that uh that uh, that ejector spring with that ejector spring now feels different even like this it feels <laughs> pulled it's nothing supporting the bottom so if you don't have the magazine in oh i have a couple of rounds of the magazine i could just use this if you don't if it's nothing supporting it from underneath it just falls right out but i could see that it's i could feel that it's captured stronger better uh doing like this uh breach checking but i could tell that it's hitting it's hitting the next round. It's hitting like this part of the next round. 
this part of the rim right here is what it's catching on and it's pulling the extractor hook right off but if but if i was if it was like my shot like that see it would work all right well I'm going to check one other thing. I'm going to make sure that this magazine spring isn't in backwards. Because sometimes when they are, it does weird stuff with the angle that this round sits inside the magazine. And it could have that effect. But I think it's in. I think it's in properly. Yeah, that's in there properly. So that's not what it is. But, uh, yep. There she blows. <laughs> Another one uh, that's... Uh, I'm pretty confident it's fixed. So now, next range trip, Beretta 418. We're going to see it in action. Bye-bye.